You cannot be serious. Keep door closed. Leads through bottom. Oh my God, guys, have a look. Comes along and starts playing with this wire. This is, this is the neighbor right here, guys. Just imagine if kids come here and start playing with this wire. That blue, see where the laser's pointing right there? That means it's a bit of water. And you can see on the screen right there, that blue section is also water. Like, why the hell did these guys pay you to do the drawings then? Come with me so I can show you what this guy's done. Look at this shamozzle right there. Oh my goodness. It is also non compliant. Where is the DPA? This is crazy. It's a complete demo job. Like, you gotta really. Non compliant, non compliant, non compliant. Look at this. That's right. This job site has been priced. Multi it's a, it's a multi-million dollar home, yeah? So the construction cost is at least $3 million plus minimum. Just to put it that way for you guys. Now let's have a look what's going on here. Get ready to be flabbergasted. <laughs> let's go. So before we go on the roof, I wanna show you guys an extract from a hydraulic engineer. The extract that should be used for this development. Now have a look what he specified and let me know what you think. Check this out. This is basically the roof right here, the roof plan. And you can see there's an arrow pointing towards the sump with an indication of the measurement, 300 by 300 by 150 mil deep sump, which is non-compliant. Has to be a minimum of 600 mil wide. 600 mil, 300 mil. It's all wrong. All the measurements here, do not work. And then look what he says here. <laughs> Box cut and sump dimensions, as indicated, are indicative only. Like, why the hell did these guys pay you to do the drawings then? If you can't give these guys the measurements. That is completely unfair for the roof plumber because, come with me so I can show you what this guy's done. All right, so I'm on the roof now. Here, 1.45, non-compliant, non-compliant. Let's take a measure of that. It's supposed to be a minimum of 600 mil. Obviously, this guy has followed the plans, non-compliant. And also, look at the overflow setup, non-compliant for a whole capacity overflow setup. And also the joins have to be 40 mil max apart. And here we've got 90 mil non-compliant. That's as well here. Let's go all the way around and have a look. Also, there should be a movement joint here. There's a movement joint as well. Now this guy has to come back now and rip all this out and do it again. It's gonna cost this roof plumber labor, materials. It's pretty bad. So let's see if we can help these guys out by spreading the knowledge around so everybody can learn. It's really easy to do it. But the worst thing is, is that these guys, now the roof plumber might be liable because the hydraulics engineer is like, hey man, uh, th this is just an indicative value. You gotta do your own math, mate. Non-compliant as well. Look at this here as well. Unbelievable. What the hell has this guy done? I mean, even though this is not compliant, it's still not 90 mil. Oh my God. Wow. Look at what happened here, guys. See this? The reinforcement bars. Finish on top of the concrete. Look at this here, you can actually see it coming through. This is a breach of AS2870, which it does state that there should be a minimum of 40 mil cover. Now, to fix this issue right here, they have to contact the engineer. So another thing that I just noticed as well is I got my thermal camera out and take a look at this. We've got the X-ray vision on and can you see those little black spots right there? Can you guys guess what it is? Now this is the tiles basically, and here's a scan 
of what's underneath the tiles. Have a look at this. What do you guys think it is? Yep, it's actually tile adhesive. Now, there's there's actually two breaches right now. There's actually a breach of the manufacturer, and I'll put an extract on the screen. And there's also a breach of the Australian standards. Now, these tiles have to be they have to be ripped off, unfortunately, because the Australian standards clearly state that. 90% of coverage is required in wet areas. That's AS 3958.1. And then also the manufacturer, they do state that any tiles uh, that are larger than 300 by 300 mil tiles, they, you must use a 12 by 12 mil square notch trail and back butter each tile. Now they've basically done here, they've spot fixed. They've used little um, blobs of glue to fix the tiles. These all have to get ripped off. Yep, that's throughout, throughout all the home. And we'll go check out other areas as well right now. This is a complete disaster. Spot fixed all the tiles. Let's take a look at the water stop here. If this is compliant. And it's also non-compliant. <coughs> Take a look at this. You've got this angle right here, terminates here. This is wrong. It has to return back and tie into the waterproofing, the perimeter flashing. The, the floor and the walls, they all have to come off. The floor and wall tiles, unfortunately, have to come off now. Oh. There you go, guys. Waterproofing throughout this home, non-compliant. Let's have a look at the balcony, and then we'll have, a look at, we'll have a look at other structural items. We'll go to the basement and see what else is going on. Now for exterior membrane application. Check this out, guys. They've actually applied polyurethane on dirt. Look at this. They haven't even prepared the substrate. They stuck it directly on, on building debris. Have a look. And also, let's just say that the manufacturer, I've actually gave a call to the manufacturer and asked him about this question about the class two membrane. Now they reckon a 15 by 15 mil fillet is adequate, which is not the case here. They haven't done that. Have a look at this. You can see how there's no <coughs> transition. And you can see the bridge cracking as well. Not only that, they haven't used the MAPE the recommended bandage. They've used, they just used a normal cloth tape right here. And that's why it's just cracking everywhere. I mean, these guys have just applied sealant into dirt. Look at that, look inside. Guys, have a look inside. Some sections, there's no tape. They've just applied, they've just applied the class two membrane. Look at the bridge cracking everywhere. See those cracks? That junction right here, have a look at the cracks. Cracking already, being compromised. Oh, it all has to get redone, guys. All this section. A lot of work to do here, a lot of work. Now, AS4440 does state that from the anchorage point to a splice, it has to be at least 2.5 meters away. And I'll put an extract on the screen for you guys to see. And don't forget that this frame has been approved. It has been approved, guys. And look at this section right here. I mean, this is what happens when the building surveyors in quite a, quite a hurry. I'll just move this away like this. Like, take a look here. All right, just let me get a better view for you guys. See that? Have a look at the bracket right there. The joist hanger bracket, how there's only two nails coming apart. I mean, this side looks okay. Uh, but this side is not adequate. And also, this has to be returned down, strapped down with three nails, non-compliant as well, to AS4440. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, just made my way onto the scaffold section. 
and check out this steel lintel right here how it's already rusted away brand new home and it's all rusted away look at the rust on it and I mean wait until you see this take a look at that it's all rusted throughout even the one over there <laughs> look behind me guys here just make sure you pay attention. Have a look at this section here. It says danger, keep out. Now, why does that state that? Now, this is a, a safety issue. We have around, let me get the tape measure out. We have around 1.1 meters height. And you gotta remember there's driver there, so there's a lot of, lot of pressure pressing on this section. Now the National Construction Codes have a clause and I'm gonna put that on the screen as well for you guys to see. They do have a clause, for example, th this class soil is class M soil. So the slope ratio has to be one to one. So what does that mean? That means, that means 1.1 height, 1.1 um, uh, length right this and has to be a 45 kind of um, slope like this and there'll be an extract for you guys to see regarding that now this is basically it's been like this for a while I'm guessing they've just put a sign right here this is a safety issue and then you guys probably already seen this have a look at this cable right here look at this cable right here let's just chase this cable all the way to the back. Oh, sorry, before I do that, I'm getting too excited here. Let me just show you one detail. So this retaining wall right here is a type A retaining wall. And according to the plans right here, it's supposed to be reinforced block work. Not only that, look at this. It's supposed to have tanking, which means waterproofing. Nothing there, guys. No waterproofing whatsoever. Oh, let's go chase up this cable and see where it leads to. And it's been supported by a conductive wire. <laughs> oh, it's still going. Light switch right here. But let's keep going, guys. Look at this. Let's go chase this cable. I thought it was Christmas lights when I first came here. Look at this fence, it's now leaning on the fence. You cannot be serious. Keep door closed. Leads through bottom. Oh my God, guys, have a look. Cables inside, exposed wiring now. Now, the dangerous thing about this right here, you can see how the boundary is fully open. What happens is if the next door neighbor, neighbor's kid comes along and starts playing with this wire. This is, this is the neighbor right here, guys. Just imagine if kids come here and start playing with this wire. High voltage. <laughs> Now, we're not saying that the company on that board are in charge of that. We're not saying that at all. But yeah, this is a major issue here. It needs to be attended to ASAP. Let's now go to the basement and see what they've been up to. I heard that they've been working really hard. It's really nice and cool here. You can see this is where they used to take their tea break. Looks like there might be some water as well there. That blue, see where the laser's pointing right there? That means it's a bit of water. And you can see on the screen right there, that blue section is also water. Oh, and also an Ozito vacuum cleaner. They probably lost it. It's right here. If the builder sees this video, the Ozito vacuum is right here, mate. Don't forget it.
So yeah, guys, there's a lot of items in this development right here. Oh. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you really like this video and you want to help my channel grow, it will help me a lot if you could subscribe, like this video and share it. And hopefully some of the trades will learn how to do their work properly. That way the builder doesn't have to check everything again and you can rely on the trades. Until next time, my friends, let's go.